And what astronomers are finding is that one of Einstein's predictions in particular just might be responsible for the crushing end of the cosmos. Einstein said that there has to be more mass in the universe than we can actually see. He predicted that there would be patches of invisible supergravity from which not even light could escape. One of the distant galaxies that astronomers found revealed a powerful source of X-rays from something they could not see. It was in the constellation Cygnus and emitted no light. But something was there. Whatever was emitting these X-rays had a mass about seven times that of the Earth's sun. There wasn't a name for it, so they called it a black hole. Black holes offer scientists an analogy to how the big crunch theory works. When certain stars run out of fuel, they collapse in on themselves into a smaller and far denser mass that attracts more and more matter, just like the big crunch. The gravitational pull is so powerful that anything that falls near a black hole will be forever trapped. Not even light can escape. It's a mind-boggling concept that something invisible is detectable and offers a view to our ultimate fate. This black tarp represents space, and space is relatively flat. But when you put a massive object into space, it curves it. This is a penny, and notice how it comes into a really beautiful circular orbit. Basically, the black hole trapped it into an orbit around itself, and that orbit becomes very circular as it gets closer. And now the penny will eventually disappear, go inside the black hole. What if our universe eventually collapsed upon itself? What if eventually all of the matter in the universe were enough to gravitationally cause it to collapse into one huge black hole? Then at the end, you would end up with a big singularity. So that's one possible future of the universe, that we end up in a singularity. We came from one, we might go into one. And that's one way you can look at it on a big macroscopic scale, that black holes, in some ways, their physics is very similar to what started the universe. And so that may be how we end up. Black holes exist in isolated areas throughout the cosmos. A black hole's gravitational pull is a scaled-down version of the force that could cause the universe to collapse. That force is dark matter, and dark matter is what scientists often call cosmic glue. Hi, Matthew. So let's do some cosmology here. <laughs> dark matter uh, attracts other objects via its gravitational attraction. It's a positive force. Dark energy, we don't really understand what it is, but it's a negative repulsing effect that pushes galaxies away from each other. The whirlpool in Richard Ellis's demonstration represents the gravitational force of dark matter. The green dye coming out of the syringe shows how the stuff of the universe collapses under the force of dark matter. The presence of dark matter acts as the focus for the gas in the universe, bringing structure together. This is how the Milky Way developed as the universe expanded. Little things merging into big things, the positive, constructive force of gravity. Now, if this was the only force in the universe, the universe would stop expanding at some point in the future, and eventually the universe would start collapsing. Gravity would eventually halt the expansion, bring it back together in a big crunch. This dark matter is responsible for producing galaxies in a finite amount of time. If, if we had to rely on the gravity of atomic matter to produce galaxies, we wouldn't be anywhere, we wouldn't exist today to be able to ask these questions because there's not enough time for gravity to have condensed the atomic matter that we know exists in the cosmos. So dark matter has to exist to, to, give, to help this process out and speed it up. Yet the universe continues to expand and isn't showing any signs of collapsing. 
This suggests the opposing force of dark energy could be stronger than dark matter. But it will take scientific detective work to find out. They look to one of the most violent forces in the universe for clues. We're studying exploding stars to try to understand if they can tell us the rate at which the universe is expanding. These are explosions at the end of the lives of stars, not unlike our sun. The fuel that these stars have in their centers is, is spent. The star collapses, the outer part expands, and the star becomes something called a white dwarf. White dwarf stars sometimes have other stars orbiting nearby, a companion star. A massive explosion could happen if the companion star's debris falls onto the white dwarf, causing a spectacular fireworks display in the cosmos. Scientists consider exploding stars or supernovae, like in these images captured by the Hubble telescope, to be reliable telltales of how fast the universe expands. Their brief and bright explosions allow scientists to track the universe's expansion and give them a way to measure its speed. Essentially, they are white dwarf stars that become nuclear bombs. They explode with a certain brightness and a certain length of time. It takes a certain amount of time for that brightness to dissipate. They are essentially standard candles. Any one of these will look the same no matter where it is in the universe. Astronomers measure the distance and speed of these exploding stars by measuring the amount of red light they emit. The faster the star moves away from us, the redder its light appears. When we study the spectrum of a supernova, we uh, get our indicators of its chemical composition. We understand the velocities as the supernova shell expands following the initial explosion. And so there's a lot of physics that we can study about the individual events. The expansion rate of galaxies containing stars like supernovae can then be used to interpret how the rest of the universe is moving outward. We know this because we can compare the velocities of galaxies with their distances. These are the clues that lead astronomers to answer just how soon the universe will reverse direction and come back together in a big crunch. Or this information might lead to an entirely different conclusion. Dr. Ellis is looking at clues at the Keck Observatory in Hawaii. While the telescope is on the top of a huge volcano, he is in a viewing room on another part of the island. Hey, emission lines, Johan. Oh, you, you see it? In the red, in the red side. I at the think. same time, Johan Reschar is at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, evaluating the light from a distant galaxy that the Keck telescope captured in Hawaii. He's looking to see if any of the known elements coming from the galaxy are in the red spectrum and moving farther away. We can interpret that as a velocity as how much the, the galaxy is moving away from us. We can really interpret how the entire universe is behaving, is expanding. Interpreting redshift is the cornerstone of the quest to pin down the fate of the universe. Clearer pictures of the universe that have only been possible in recent years have led cosmologists to conclude that the redshift of distant galaxies is greater than previously predicted. This is startling. Not only is the universe expanding, it's speeding up. Nothing in the observable cosmos could account for an accelerating universe. And yet the data seems irrefutable. This has to mean that an invisible force is working against gravity. Cosmologists have come up with a name. Dark energy. So when the universe was young, gravity was the most dominant force. And so what we see here is galaxies as particles on the surface of the water are bound together by gravity. And the point about seven billion years ago, dark energy and gravity are pretty well in balance. But the universe continues to expand, the density goes down, and so dark energy starts to take over. And lo and behold, the universe starts to accelerate. Uh, so dark energy is now the dominant property of space. 
So the universe started out with a certain amount of energy, and we know we're trying to understand how much energy there is, and we know the universe is expanding as it as it moves outward with time. We also know now that.